You're listening to The Thrive Podcast, where every week we dive into a practical, tactical tip to bring you from a life of simply surviving to thriving. It's personal development for the everyday girl who is done with coasting through her days, done with feeling like she's missing out on the deeper meaning of her own life, and done with mediocrity once and for all. Because it's not enough to simply survive, you deserve to thrive. Welcome back to Thrive. If you've been wanting or needing more energy in your everyday, today's episode with Pamela Barton is for you. Pamela is a registered holistic nutritionist and a natural nutrition certified practitioner with loads of practical tips and simple solutions to what might feel like an impossible problem if you're frequently finding yourself just dragging. Today's episode has everything from five energy fueling favorites to grab on your next grocery run to a 10 second rule to scientifically curb your body's stress response before it happens and wreaks physiological havoc. Pamela also has advice for boosting energy if you're someone with an autoimmune condition or thyroid issue and a way to help literally reset your circadian rhythm to sleep better at night. Stay tuned through this conversation. Drop it five stars if you like what you're listening to. And now, welcome, Pamela. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm happy to be here. Yay. And you're in Canada right now, eh? I am. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> I, I love it. it. <laughs> well, I'm excited for this conversation. So talk to us about you. You are a registered holistic nutritionist. You're a natural nutrition certified practitioner, and you have a degree in organizational management, which I personally think is so cool. I know what that is because I took classes on that in college as well, and I love it. Totally nerd out about it. But what does it mean to be a holistic nutritionist and a natural nutrition certified practitioner? Yes, that is actually, it's funny that you mentioned the other degree because that was my first career, um, you know, in in business administration and working in the corporate world and and doing all of these things and then transitioning to be all about food and helping people, you know, uh, reclaim their energy and their health uh, through nutrition and lifestyle. And um, I really took this path and it, it wasn't really planned. Uh, I took it because I felt the need to help myself. And that, that's how, how many people start to get into this, this field. Um, I was researching really to feel better uh, for my own health naturally, because I didn't really want to, wanted to take medications or go that route. So I was really intrigued. Okay, so what else is there that I can really do on, on a regular basis to improve my health and, and to make sure I'm uh, you know, I'm stable and I have enough energy and can, you know, do the things I want to do in life. And nutrition and lifestyle came up like every time I looked into this. So mm-hmm. I was intrigued and I said, okay, let's, uh, let's look a little bit more closely. What, what is that and, and how can, can I benefit from it? And I was mm-hmm. so excited that I decided to make it uh, a career. That's awesome. So talk to us a little bit more about what those changes looked like for you, because I, you said, obviously, okay, this kept coming up as you were doing your research. So what, what were kind of the common threads that you were seeing where that you started implementing and started seeing changes, maybe, maybe sooner rather than later too, where you were like, okay, wait, like this is something, this is working. Yeah, for sure. So I uh, previously, I had never really connected the dots with how I felt and how I ate. Um, I didn't really have uh, education in nutrition. I never really thought it's, it's more than just you're hungry, you eat, you go, you're done. And only when I noticed that my health started to suffer and things popped up about, you know, your nutrition, it's important, change it. And I was like, okay, let's, let's look into this. What does that mean? And then I also felt it's something that I can do because I have control over and I'm in charge of what I'm eating. So it felt doable to me to at least give it a try. And I didn't want to overwhelm myself. I said, okay, I give myself a month and really see uh, what happens when I change the way I ate. And what I did was I stayed away from 
uh, processed food as much as I could and found out that it's much harder than I thought it would be um, once I understood the definition of processed foods. Um, and I had always thought I was eating healthy before that, and I was kind of shocked to see what it really was once I started to do that. I started to eat more whole foods. I started making my own meals, which was hard, and I was whining a lot because I didn't really know what I was doing. And so I did all of this for a month, and uh, lo and behold, um, I felt amazing. And I don't think I ever felt better. And I thought I didn't feel bad before, but then I, I noticed the difference and I really understood for myself how powerful just making nutrition changes was on my on in my life and on my body. And yeah. that really convinced me that um, food is medicine and there's no argue around it. Um, that is really powerful. And most of the time we underestimate really what it can do for us. Yeah. And it's interesting. I've had a couple of conversations with people on Thrive Now where this, this kind of comes up. And it's just so interesting because it's so contrary to what so much is, so to what we see like in the grocery store or whatever. Um, so it's really interesting. Have you heard of the food wave on Instagram? Uh, yes, I think I've seen it. Yeah, but I, okay. I don't know any more details. Yeah, but, yeah. I, I literally just came across her account yesterday and it was incredible because it was just the post I saw was just contrasting um even just some fast food fast foods in general in America versus in uh Europe where things are regulated more and it was like McDonald's yes. french fries for example and it was comparing the ingredients and the makeup of McDonald's French fries in America versus overseas where things are more strictly regulated and certain certain literally chemicals aren't allowed. And it blew my mind because you really don't think that, like, I would never have thought that something like a franchise fast, fast food would be so significantly different country to country, but like, it really is. So now I'm curious, what's, what's like your favorite, um, snack or treat that you've gotten to know and love that kind of could be a sample replacement for like a popular processed food if people are trying to check out their pantry look in their freezer whatever and like all right this favorite thing gotta go but what's something that can replace it and and fill the void <laughs> Yeah, you know, this is such a complex question, actually, I have like so much to say to it. So I try and keep it simple, because I always feel it's evolving. It is always a journey because you have to look where you start from. So if you eat a lot of processed foods, and this is just how you eat, you might just want to start with changing the product that um, that, you know, tells you it might be a little bit healthier, you know, to, to transition to a better snack, because if you go um, all in it, it sometimes doesn't really work for everybody. So it's really a uh, transition your snacks is I guess my message. Um, because yes, you can buy healthier junk food products, you can buy healthier bars, you know, whatever it is. Um, you can also start making all your snacks yourself, right. And and that is also something um, I recommend people to look into making quick snacks themselves at home and really play with different foods that they like and put them together in different ways. Um, so after I transitioned from store-bought snacks, I went to, for example, making my own nut mixes and mixing it with fruit. Um, I just put all of this together and became creative with a tray, uh, you know, these types of things. It really it evolves and it depends on where you're naturally drawn towards. And, and, then, and then also for me, a phase as I started eating better at meals, I didn't really need any snacks because I felt full, I fe felt stable, I had no sugar cravings or anything. So then I thought, well, this is great. I don't even need to think about snacks, you know, but it's, it's, it evolves and it's a transition and it always depends on, you know, your philosophy, what you want to achieve. And if you're really into snacks and you really want to know, then yes, you can go totally crazy with finding really good snacks for you. Um, but your goal can also be going snack free and just eating meals. And then that's possible too. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is a, it's a very complex question. Um, so currently, if I snack personally, I usually just do a handful uh, of nuts and I do love um, dark chocolate, by the way. Mm. So it makes a super great combination, some nuts with some dark chocolates. Uh, I also like pumpkin seeds a lot and um, 
and these types of things. But I don't I don't snack a lot anymore because I feel like my meals uh, fill me up and I'm good to go. Yeah, no, that's good. So for those of us who maybe are naturally high energy people, don't have the best diet or still have processed foods, whatever, but still have higher energy or people who maybe want to be higher energy people, talk to us about how it might be possible to get there and keep it there with like a sustained high, high energy for everyday life. Yes. Yes. That's, I'm so excited about this. And, um, I think the first, it always starts with awareness uh, because we have to be aware of where our energy is coming from uh, because there are different ways. There is our natural energy that we have that is not a whole lot influenced by what we do. And, and that's the, the energy we, we ultimately want. But then there's also the, I call it artificially boosted energy um, because we can achieve this with caffeine, right? High caffeinated drinks. We can achieve this with sugary snacks because there are lots of uh, foods who fuel basically artificial energy, ramping up our system to get us going. And I mean, the, the lifestyle habit that we have of starting our day off with a large coffee with sugar and cream and, and maybe donuts and all of this, that is for, for a reason, right? So that we can get going because we feel so tired and, 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 and you know, like we don't want to get going and that we push ourselves. And then we say, oh, now we have lots of energy. You know, we had that coffee, we had the sugary snacks and oh, my energy is fine. And in the afternoon, I have more coffee and more sugar. And then people say, well, I have great energy. So that is not natural energy because if you would take those substances away, they would crash. Right, because they they rely on this. So what I'm trying to achieve with people is to to um, really restore the natural energy that your body has um, by feeding it the right foods that are not artificially creating these blood sugar ups and downs. Um, so showing them, you know, what better foods there are and maybe what to. Uh, um, not eat and drink for a while, you know, to, to balance things out. So blood sugar stabilization is definitely a big one when we talk about energy. And usually people who have natural energy, um, they have stable blood sugar levels throughout the day. They don't have the crashes, the up and downs and, and the big cravings. And that's really a super important key um, to sustain energy. I mean, there are a ton of others, but I think that is the the one that everyone can focus on to look at first before doing other things, because it mm -hmm. can it can really bring bring you results quickly and uh, stabilize your energy for the day. Yeah. So give us like your top five recommendations. You're going into the grocery store. You want five things that will help you in stabilizing your blood sugar and creating that sustainable natural energy. What would you recommend? So I would always say uh, your best friend is the uh, fruit and vegetable aisle um, because they will support your body with all the nutrients you need for good energy. So stay away from boxed and processed food as much as you can because they suck out energy. They need more energy for digestion and then you don't have it available. So if you want to go and you buy... Um, uh, you can buy some fruit and you can buy whatever you like uh, because fruit, even though it has sugar, um, it's it's packaged with fiber, which does not have the same effect. So you want to look at fruit and you want to look at vegetables and, and salads and protein. So protein is another thing that can offset um, blood sugar imbalances. Um, so for example, if you want to mix a nice salad with everything you like and you put some protein on top, that can really stabilize uh, your blood sugar and, and will give you energy. And you can eat as much as you want from it. So I'm not talking about a little side salad. You can really make a big portion and that's fine. Um, so yeah, protein, uh, vegetables, uh, fruit. Um, for, for drinks, I would say water. Water is your best take, even though it sounds boring. Um, but pops and, and, and caffeine and, uh, you know, all of these things, they will not really help you. Um, so clean, uh, clean water and a lot, because another thing why sometimes we don't have enough energy is because we don't drink enough. We get dehydrated. We feel tired. Uh, so having lots of water 
super, super important. That's what I recommend ev everybody to do every single day. And uh, what else? I, I think I got four, but vegetables <laughs> and fruit is um, is a lot, you know? Yeah. So those would be my best. Oh yeah, nuts, nuts and seeds. Uh, they're stabilizing as well. Uh, they contain fats, healthy fats and healthy proteins, and they can also help you feel uh, full longer and, and help you with energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so cool. So beyond diet, then talk to us mm -hmm. about the correlation between your energy during the day and sleep or stress or any other sort of extraneous factor that could obviously impact how you're just, how you're feeling and how you're able to show up for the day. Absolutely. I mean, it's really no secret that when we don't sleep well, we don't uh, feel well the next day, right? I think everyone has experienced that if we didn't have a very good night, we don't have a good morning, we might not have a good day. And it's okay if it happens once in a while, we can usually deal with it. But if this happens on a regular basis, then that becomes a problem. It is a huge strain on your body when you can't sleep well. Because what happens at night when you sleep, your body rejuvenates, it replenishes, it re repairs and restores. So that's basically where the housekeeping happens, where the cleaning up happens and where the energy basically um, the mitochondria, you know, restore themselves so that they can uh, provide you with lots of energy again the next day. So if we jeopardize that, then as you can imagine, um, things cannot really go well during the day because we, we're going to struggle because we're not ready for the day. That's basically what it is. So if, if, we, if we don't have a safe and sound sleep every single night, we really do need to work on improving our sleep because there's no way around it. If we don't sleep, we can do whatever we want. The energy will just not come. So looking at that, and uh, we, we would always want to look at sleep hygiene, not just the duration. Some people say, well, but I'm in bed for eight hours. Yeah, that's fine. But if you don't really sleep sound, it doesn't matter You know how many hours you're in bed. Uh, you really do need to look at your sleep hygiene. Like, are you falling asleep okay? Do you stay asleep at night? And if not, there are things we can do um, to, to help you get into a better bedtime routine and make sure we support the sleep hormones, melatonin, you know, because often a hormone imbalance is the reason why the sleep's not working. And, and so we need to uh, really figure out, okay, what, what is happening and what exactly do we need to do to correct it? And resetting the circadian rhythm, um, that is, is profound on sleeping, uh, sleeping better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do you do that? Resetting the circadian rhythm, because that's yeah. like super cool. Yes, yeah, so good question. So basic, it's, it's super simple actually. All of these things are super simple, but we don't give them credit because we don't really think they're powerful. It's the same with food, right? We don't think food is powerful because it's there. Um, so it's really simple because we do need to adjust um, uh, our eyes with the light outside because that's where our hormones get the signals um, on like when to, you know, when to be more and when to be less. Um, so if we don't uh, expose our eyes to, the, to sunlight at certain times of the day, uh, the signals can get mixed up. So first of all, it's sunlight and we do need to go outside in the morning at lunch and at dinner because we have different uh, light waves uh, that are dominant, dominant during those times. And they do play a role in the signaling of our hormones. So being outside at the right times of the day, uh, super important for circadian rhythm. And um, also looking at blue light in terms of screens and TVs. Um, because the more we do of those at night, it tells our body it's day, daytime and uh, daylight. So why would we want to go to bed and sleep when it's daytime? When in, when in fact, it's almost approaching midnight and we're still watching TV. So we're mixing up um, the signals in our head uh, with our behavior, right? So that is why we have to do some readjustment and that's called resetting the circadian rhythm. It's really super simple. It's just, we have to make changes and, and that's, that's often the bigger problem, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's a lifestyle component. Yeah, no, for sure. I know part of your work too is around helping increase energy levels in folks who might have autoimmune conditions, 
thyroid issues, that sort of thing. So what sorts of other tips that maybe we haven't mentioned yet would apply to friends listening in, in that place where maybe the same sort of energy boosting tips and tricks that would work otherwise might have to be tweaked even a little bit more given what you're dealing with in your body. Yeah, for sure. So usually there's not one thing that works and solves all the problems. If there yeah. was, it was, it would be easy. So it usually comes together. It's like, I always explain it as a puzzle, right? You have different puzzle pieces and you need to set, put them together to benefit from the whole uh, outcome from the, the result, right? So um, definitely what you need to look at if this is not helping alone is stress. And um, again, it sounds pretty basic because we all have stress, but there's actually more to it because it's more like, um, how are we dealing with the stressors? Because we all have stress and it's not about how can, we, how can we avoid stress? That's not, because that's not realistic, right? We don't wanna sit in a bubble wrap all day and say, if nobody talks to me, if nothing to do, then I have no stress. That's not how it works. But we need to really look at, okay, so how do we perceive stress? How do we manage it? And what do we do with stress assaults, I call them, that that affects us, you know, and this is really learning a new behavior and getting rid of old uh, mindsets, uh, old behaviors, old thought patterns. That has a lot to do with with uh, stress. And, and there are a lot of things and um, there are more things actually coming out because it's a, it's a, um, a focus of study these days. Um, what techniques and what mindsets um, can help us with just, you know, tell our body, hey, we're safe. Yes, there's lots going on. I have lots of things to do and there's a lot of demands, but hey, I'm safe. You know, I'm not personally threatened. There's no tiger that's going to eat me tomorrow or, or now. Um, so that's what we really want to achieve, to feel more safe in our body and especially when we talk about autoimmune and thyroid conditions that often comes to a feeling of not feeling safe in our bodies and um, that is something that really needs to be looked at it can be tra trauma it doesn't have to be it can just be learned behavior um, whatever it is but this needs to be looked at because as long as we stay in this agitated state um, on and on and on and on um, you know, we can eat the healthiest diet and sleep somewhat sound. There's always this underlying issue of I'm not safe. And what it does for energy is the body spends energy on keeping you safe, right? It has to because that's a survival mechanism. So when it, your body does that, guess you don't have any energy to use it, right? It's either helping you to stay alive or you have it to spend it. Both doesn't work at the same time. So helping your body calm down and not be so excited all the time will give you more energy, right? So naturally. And yeah. there are lots of hormones um, at play to regulate this. And they all, they're all they all interconnected and they all play together because it also has to do with blood sugar and your diet. So you also can't separate them. You have to do all of these things at the same time. And I think that's a big secret um because it does take time it does take effort and you need to know what you need to do at the same time to really make progress and that's where lots of people fail they do one thing and they say didn't work you know don't don't look at it it's not working no most most often it doesn't because you have to put all the pieces together and and then it'll work mm -hmm. do you have a favorite technique maybe for de-stressing in the moment and calming your body down, especially for someone who might have an autoimmune. If you do feel yourself going into this sort of fight or flight mode and you're trying to physiologically reverse it in the moment, like yes. right then and there. <laughs> yes. That is an amazing question because yes, there is such a thing. It's called the 10 second rule. I don't know if you heard of that. Um, so basically what happens, I explain the background and then you know why I suggest that. When you launch a full on stress response, like something happens to you and you feel you physically react, um, your body has just launched, you know, a survival hormone cascade uh, to prepare you to fight for your life. And um, those hormones, when we are 
a female will stay in our body for 24 hours. So even if it's just five minutes, you got super stressed, you still have the effect for 24 hours in your body. Meaning during that time, you will have a chronic stress response. And only if after those 24 hours, you do not have another stressful event, will your body start calming down. So now in our society, we, we are stressed like several times um during the day or something happens or we feel it and so we never get out of this so what we do want to do oh and i want to say for men by the way it's nine hours so men cope with this faster than we do um but yeah for us women it's 24 hours so what we want to do is not launch this stress cascade of hormones right that's that's our best bet so that's where the 10 second rule comes into play so if something happens, so like you eat, uh, you read an upsetting email or someone tells you something that you don't like and you feel you get all defensive, right? Or I don't know what else. I mean, everyone knows what happens when you experience something stress or a person talking to you uh, or yelling at you on the street or whatever it is. We have to catch ourselves as fast as we can when we realize Oh, this is going to stress me out so we have 10 seconds um it doesn't sound a lot but it actually is in the in the context of things so we have 10 seconds to realize hey this is what's going to happen and then we stop the thoughts and we stop right there it's like we freeze but we we choose not to engage in the thought or the the physical um reaction we have we kind of say stop and then we really stop and it, it requires some practice because it doesn't probably work the first few times, but it will after a while. So we have 10 seconds to stop this. Okay. And then you can, uh, you can get out of it. And then once you relax, then you can think about it more rationally if you need to, um, or, you know, walk away for a little while, come back to it and say, okay, let, let me deal with this from a more relaxed standpoint. And that is usually a better reaction to it. Uh, and oftentimes we, we can craft better answers too, right? If we are not stressed, because we also can think straight and we're not gonna make the best decisions when we're stressed. That is another fact. So we want to apply those the 10 second rule to just stop us from engaging in this uh, stress attack. I like that too, because it reminds me of something I wrote in my book and I, I wrote this forever ago about pausing to respond instead of reacting. And I love this because it's like the, it's like the scientific, the scientific research that coincides with this now <laughs> so yeah. beautifully, but it's really like taking the moment to form a crafted or articulated actual response instead of just letting your gut reaction take over. And that's yeah. cool that it's literally, I mean, I think you're right. 10 seconds sounds like not a lot, but if you really set a timer and sit in it, it's much more time than you probably would have given to react in a moment. If you are hit with something, like you said, someone yelling at you, someone going off, seeing something really stressful, like that, you literally have a knee jerk reaction to something that is much quicker than 10 seconds. So if you truly take a 10 second pause whenever possible, I guess, what would your response be though? If given the circumstances, it's not really possible to take 10 seconds. Is there still a way to kind of have a moment of peace and form a form an actual response that still mitigates that stress release, the hormone release in your body? Or is it, are there some situations where you're just like, yeah, you're out of luck. You're going to have it no matter what. Yeah. And I mean, we're all humans, right? So we shouldn't be very hard on ourselves if it doesn't work right away. And there are situations where it just never enters your mind that you could do this. You're just reacting and you know, it's, it's done and, and you're, completely in it and it's not getting better right i mean this will still happen but knowing your tools and your techniques will really help you deal with the aftermath as well and that's what we would want to do so if you're if you forgot about the 10 second rules you're totally in it you reacted to it physically mentally like your day is kind of done sort of scenario um, as soon as you catch yourself that that's what's happening try and remove yourself from the situation so for example, I like to just go where I can be by myself. And then I, I apply some breathing techniques to just calm down, to give my body a chance to relax, 
you know, so I don't want to see anyone. So I'm by myself, I'm breathing. And there are different breathing techniques that you can apply and practice them. And they will actually really help you calm down your nervous system. And then I just feel into my body. I try to get out of my head and not be angry or mad or whatever. I just try and be in my body and talk to my body and say, hey, I'm fine. I'm okay. Yes, maybe I felt I was attacked or maybe something happened that I did not like and I reacted to it, but hey, here I am, I'm okay. There's no threat on me, on my life. Uh, you know, like I have all my limbs still, everything's working, you know, relax. And then another thing is to release your abs because watch yourself when you're all excited and angry, you suck your gut in and you prepare for, for running. So just relax your app, let it hang out and don't worry about your belly. Okay. If it hangs over your pants, just don't worry about it. It's not important you, because you cannot be stressed. And that's another physical discovery I made. You cannot be stressed when your belly hangs loose. It doesn't work because when you're stressed, you suck your belly in and get all rigid and all tight. So let go, you know, like relax everything, your arms, your legs, and your belly, let it hang out like go in full relaxation mode and just feel it. Don't think anything, just feel. And that will help your body to kind of understand what you're trying to say. You're trying to say, hey, okay, there is no threat. Okay, we can all sit down again and relax. And that's really what you want to achieve um, as much as you can, because only after your body feels safe and feels relaxed, can your brain actually think smartly. You know, so we always forget this. We always think we need to go in head head first and you know throw it all out there and solve it all when in fact our body has to become first, right? There's sort of like a, a hierarchy here. And we usually if we don't know this, we don't pay attention to our body, maybe after the fact, but not first. And so I encourage everyone to just turn the order around, watch your body first, and then use your head. Yeah. That's so good. Well, Pamela, I want to get things wrapped up by asking you something we ask every guest on Thrive, and that is, what does Thrive mean to you, and how do you strive to thrive in your everyday life? Yeah, amazing. So I love the word Thrive uh, because I feel we all have a right to thrive. Every single human being on this planet, we're here to thrive because we have a life purpose. We have something that we want to do something that we want to achieve. And that is only possible when we thrive. If we don't, there will always be restrictions. There will always be hazards. There will always be something that's holding us back. And in terms of health, if you don't thrive, you cannot give your best because you, you, you can't, it's not for you to spend. You don't have it, right? So thriving is really the only way to live a purposeful life and uh, to achieve everything, to be healthy uh, and, and to live well. That's really the only way. Yeah, I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Tell everybody where they can find you online to connect with you more. Yes, thank you. So uh, I'm in Canada, but that doesn't, uh, it's, it's of no importance because I work exclusively online these days. Um, so you can find me under butterflyholisticnutrition.ca. That's my website and you can see um, all the things I do and offer that are there. If you want to know specifically more on how I help people with solving their energy crisis and getting them back to thriving, uh, you can watch my free webinar where I lay out the blueprint that I'm using. And you can do that under www.metabolicenergysolution.com. This way you can watch it and you can uh, send me an email through my webpage. Wait, before you go, make sure you're subscribed to never miss an episode of Thrive. Drop five stars on your way out if you like what you just listened to. And come join the party on Instagram at thrive.podcast to stay inspired and thriving all week long. Thanks for tuning in. It's your time to thrive.